Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Sonic Love. So in today's video we're going to be modding a new analog stick PS Vita for the original OG Kiddy RGB10. Now the new version which I've done lots of videos if you haven't seen them check go check them out it actually comes with a metal shell black metal shell it also comes with a PS Vita analog stick a bit dirty uh, analog stick also a fantastic new screen better battery all in all absolutely love it if you if you're looking for a starter handheld I strongly recommend this one or the RGB 20 especially the new one NES so here we have a slim obviously the analog sticks are white I have three all together and then we have the black version which is pretty cool as you can see the analog stick is black so with this one it's the one that comes with the Odroid Go Advance and a lot of other handhelds, which is a really cheap and nasty, very thin, don't know if you can see it, it looks like a frisbee. Don't get me wrong, it works and it does the job, but it just doesn't look right. So I ordered five PS Vita analog sticks. So here we have... Here we have a grey one. It's got nice travel on it. Very, very uh, restrictive, and bounces straight back to the middle like a champ. So, because of the theme being white, and then the analog stick being black, I thought that I should order the white one for this because I think it'll be quite fitting and it'll make it look quite nice as well. So I will be doing other mods for different handhelds guys as well and a lot more mods to come because I do a lot of modding behind the scenes especially with the likes of uh, Game Boy Advances, that's my passion, <coughs> obviously I'm doing one on a giveaway which is the Zelda one but my favourite is the SNES one that I did so the same again original Game Boy Advance but just with a new shell new IPS screen no juice oh there is So really nice IPS screen to fit in and then five levels of brightness with a little bit of magic, a bit of soldering. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, really love this design. I've got a couple more that I'm doing at the moment. I'm doing a another Dragon Ball Z one and a Pikachu one. So yeah, I might start doing the videos for them guys. If you wish to see, let me know in the comments and I will gladly include modding my little bit of a passion. Game Boy Advance SP. Okay, so a couple of tools that you might need. Pincher is always good especially for attaching like thin ribbon cables just to get it, you know, bend it and twist it and poke it in and push it in. Got to be very delicate with these otherwise they can break very easily. Scalpel, just for the hell of it. Obviously lots of different screw heads, loads of them, always handy, interchangeable, really cool. A pokey stick, 
pretty thin, quite sharp. Because normally they're quite recessed. And so normally you have to poke them out and it's easier to poke them out with one of these. One, you don't damage it. Two, you wouldn't be able to do it with just your fingers. Oh, and then I've lost it. So another one, just poke it in. And it should pop out after a little bit of persuasion. I don't want to pierce it, but I just want to move it enough to pop it out. Two down, two to go. Okay, so let's just test this to see whether this is the right one straight away. I thought as much. Four screws. Now I've not looked inside the RGB 10 yet, so I don't know what I'll be contending with and whether I'll need to wait until we get some screws. And if that's the case, I'm screwed literally but i'm sure the original one will have screws and let's hope they're the same similar size okay so normally your fingernail can pry open just find it like a soft spot and then just slide your finger nail right across and normally it will crack open the seal and off to wiggle it off. Should take the SD card out really, shouldn't I? That would help. Okay. If you haven't got fingernails, then try and get something that's plastic, not metal, otherwise you'll risk damaging it. Okay, so my fingernail is strong enough. How am I looking? Okay. So we have got wires to contend with. So the, the speaker wires and the battery wire. We can uh, disconnect them, so that's what we'll do. Just pop them off with your finger. Be sure you don't damage anything. Take the L1 and L2, R1 and R2 out. Just put them on the side for now. Don't want to damage anything. Also take out the power button and the reset button. Be careful because it's attached in one. And you might snap it. It looks like we don't have to take them out actually. So we can just leave them in for now. Hopefully you guys can see that. But this is what we're looking for. Bring those down. So this is the bad boy here. So there is two screws. So we're going to attach them there is also a little flip catch I don't know if you can see I'll try and show you okay so you can see there's a tiny little flap 
it's keeping the ribbon cable in. So I've just disattached that. This is where the pinches come in handy. Pinch in and then pull it out. And then it's free. So there are two screws. So you can take them out, be careful. Place the screws aside. It should just be a straightforward swap. This is the old one. Not bad, but it's just in incredibly thin and you know for a couple of pence more to get a PS Vita one. Come on. It's 2021 nearly. Okay, so if you look for comparison, they're pretty much identical. Ribbon cable is in the same place. The screw holes are you know, exactly the same, in the same orientation. You shouldn't have a problem at all doing a straight swap over to the PS Vita analog stick keep this just in case it breaks or if you're like me then you've got a little bit of a stock so then it makes life a bit easier so we just place it in I can see straight away that the screws themselves are lined up very nicely so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to attach the ribbon cable first. to pick it up guys just to show you as you can see just pull it out and push it back in again make sure that it's definitely connected and it can't push anymore and close the flap and your ribbon cable is successfully connected all's left to do is line up place in the screws screw it in place don't do it tight just yet just do it loose get them both in first because it protrudes out at the bottom we don't want to put it in tight just yet because we want to make sure there's a little bit of a gap and it's not pushing down and then you need that little bit of looseness just to catch the threads right because obviously if you do it a couple of times or multiple times, you don't want that thread to keep wearing away as you do it. So then lift it up, push it down as much as possible, and then tighten on the screws. Oh, 
once you feel it can't go round enough anymore, then stop. Don't overdo it. Remember, we're dealing with plastic, so it has a habit of breaking, believe it or not. So now we need to put back in the R2. L2, power buttons, reset button, which just slot into place. They simply just drop in very easily. Same with R2. Repeat the process with L1 and L2. Flip it over. Make sure that the wires I'm not touching the edge, so when you close it, it's not trapping it on anything, cutting the wires or digging into the wires. We should be able to simply just crack it into place now. Just give it quite a firm press right the way around. Then we make sure that we're clicking the buttons. Make sure we've got full motion and rotation on the analog stick. I think it looks absolutely a hundred times better than what it did originally. Let's know what you think. So. Here we have it. We have the PS Vita. Very nice. Okay, so let's put the, what we'll do actually is we'll put the SD card back in. And we'll just make sure that it's working before we put the screws in, just in case. Okay, so we got Batisera in there. I think it looks really nice though, do you guys? Let me know in the comments what you think. I think it really, you know, goes with the aesthetics and the theme with it. <coughs> so what we'll do, I think we'll test, yeah, as you can see, works perfectly. Very responsive, it's got that rubber feel and this is one of the giveaways, guys. So when if you do win it, you will, it will also come with the PS Vita mod. I won't take it back off. I'm not that cruel. So let's go to PSP. And let's make sure that it definitely works. Not just up and down. I can find bloody PSP, here we go.
Noticing a considerable improvement straight away, guys. Just with the feel and look of it. Looks nice. Yeah, really responsive. It's just bad driving, not the analog stick. <laughs> Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's finish the process. Let's see what I'll do actually. Okay, so let's put the four screws back in. Okay, and lastly, we just need to pop the caps back in. Now they're easier to get out than what they are to put back in. <coughs> Last one being a bit awkward, well first one being a bit awkward, just doesn't want to go in straight.
Spanish blonde. There we go. Done. So as you can see, all in, nice and flush, like nothing's ever happened. So there we have it guys, that is how to mod your RGB 10 to the new fantastic PS Vita analog stick and as you can see it was working perfectly. It took about 15 minutes to do, very easy and straightforward, very simple. I'll leave links in the description um, for you to order them if you have an RGB 10 or you have any, yeah, any one that you want to change in exchange for a PS Vita analog stick. As always, guys, please give it a massive like. And yeah, if you didn't like it, dislike it. Please share it. Help the community grow. Merry Christmas to everybody. And as always, take care.